Welcome to the QSales Data Video Library. This video will take you through the configuration of the QSales Data Product. So after you've downloaded and installed the QSales Data Product from our website, qsalesdata.com, the first time you open up ACT, you'll get a blue screen to register or hit try if you're going to be in trial mode. And then upon entry to ACT, you'll get the QSales Data Installation Wizard screen, just like the one you see here. If for some reason you accidentally close this screen and you want to get back to it, you can access the installation wizard by going to Tools, QSales Data Install Wizard, and that'll pull that screen back up for you. At this point, we're just following the steps. They're numbered one through five, six here you see. We're going to start at the top left, and we're going to build fields. Click on the build fields. It does require you to log in as the ACT administrator. Now, for you, those of you that are using single licenses of ACT, you may not know what your ACT username is. To find that out, you can close out of the wizard and go to Tools, Manage Users, and Act, and it'll actually show you what your username is. That's what you're going to log in as, and hopefully you remember your password. So I'm going to go back to the Install Wizard, and I'm going to run the build fields. I'm going to select all the fields here. In some cases, if I don't use the company records in ACT or opportunities, I can uncheck those, but in this case I'm just going to check them all. I'm going to log in as the ACT administrator. In this case I don't have a password. If you do have a password, obviously you would enter it in there. And I'll simply click on Build Fields. Now this process, depending on the speed of your computer, could take, you know, uh, five minutes, ten minutes, because we've got to build all the fields in order to store the uh, QuickBooks data within the ACT database. So um, wait for this to finish. It'll tell you when it's complete and then you're going to be able to move on to step two. When your build fields program or process does complete, you'll notice that you get the field creation complete message here and you also get a message that in order to refresh your field list you must close and reopen ACT. So let's go ahead and do that. Close out of ACT and go back in. Okay, now we're back in ACT. We've got the installation wizard. And we can see that step two is actually to install the QB data tab. And we need to actually close out of the install wizard to do that quick. There is a video there, but we're going to take you through it right now. So I'll close out of the install wizard. And we're going to go to Tools, Q Sales Data Tab Install. Click on that button and then we're going to use the current layout. Whatever your current layout is, we're going to make a copy of that layout, add a QB, an underscore QB to the end of it, and add the QB data tab to that layout. So let's go ahead and do that. So I just click OK. It adds that operation completed successfully. Now I can go into the layout editor and update that. So you see here it's telling us to go to Tools, Design Layouts, Contacts. Let's go there. Tools, Design Layouts, Contact. That will bring out the Layout Designer. Within the Layout Designer I click on the QB Data tab and notice there's a little blurb here that says click here to complete the installation. Go ahead and click there. It'll work its magic. Completed successfully. Click OK. You notice all the fields appear on that tab. I can close out of the layout designer and say yes to save. Now what that has done is number one, it's added another layout to my layout selector. So for everyone in your ACT system that you want to see that QB data tab, you need them to switch to this basic contact layout with the QB at the end of it and that makes this QB data tab appear here. It was not there before but now it is. So now we can go on to the next step of the install wizard which is setting your field mapping. So we can go ahead and click on set mapping and what we typically recommend is just go ahead and set reset the defaults um, the defaults are normally fine 95% of the time. Um, if you wanted to, for example, you could map the alt phone in QuickBooks to the mobile phone in ACT. But other than that, you're pretty much set. 
Uh, if you do have custom fields in QuickBooks, you can do the detect custom fields, but you know we have a separate uh, set of instructions for that. So let's just go with the basic here. You're going to map the fields. That's completed. So notice we got step one, step two, step three completed. Now let's create the certificate. So we need to have QuickBooks open. The appropriate QuickBooks file, if you have multiple QuickBooks files, you need to have the one that goes along with this ACT database. So if you have multiple ACT databases and multiple QuickBooks databases, just make sure you have the matching two open at this point. And I need to be logged in as the administrator into QuickBooks. And we recommend being logged in at, in single user mode. So if I pop up QuickBooks here, you'll notice that under file, there's a switch to multi-user mode and a switch to single user mode. I'm already in single user mode, that's why it says switch back to multi-user mode. But um, switching to single user mode, just a heads up, you'll need everybody else to get out of QuickBooks in order to do that. But to create the certificate, which you'll see goes fairly quickly, you'll want to have everybody get out of QuickBooks, switch to single user mode. Once again, you're logged in as the administrator. I'll minimize QuickBooks and go back to ACT here and now I'm going to click on create certificate. When I do that, my QuickBooks down at the bottom will actually start flashing and I can click on it and it'll pop up this application certificate window. From here I want to select the yes always even if it's not running option and I want to pick the admin user. Okay, so the yes always option, pick the admin user, click on continue, and then hit the done button. And now that certificate exists in QuickBooks. And notice the status is completed. So at this point you've got the core functionality built and now the only steps left are to link your records between Act and QuickBooks. If you, if you have an existing Act database and an existing QuickBooks database, you need to run our link wizard to match those up. Once those are matched up, then you'll run a transaction sync. If you're starting out with a blank Act database, then you'll run our create from QB feature, which is right here. There's a video on how to do that as well. So once again, the two scenarios, one, if you have an existing Act database, with QuickBooks customers in it and an existing QuickBooks database. You need to link those records. You'll run our link wizard here and you'll tell it what to match on. Once again, we recommend watching one of these videos. Either you're, you're selling to um, customer, you know, business to business, or you're selling to individuals. There are two separate videos there. And then if you're starting out with a brand new ACT database, then you can just use our create from QB feature to pull all those customers from QuickBooks into ACT and there's a couple of uh, links here for you to review before you use the create from QB. So it'll be one or the other and then finally when you have the links in place then you can bring data over by running our transaction sync and what we recommend there is go uh, for for the initial sync you want to go back far enough to cover as long as you've been working with QuickBooks. So let's say if you've been working with QuickBooks for 10 years you want to go back three you know 3650 so you'll you know put 3650 in each of these fields and then you would click on the transaction sync button right here and that would pull in 10 years worth of data when running the manual sync here going back 10 years for example you may want to wait till the end of the day to run this because it can take a while to bring in 10 years worth of transactions obviously that's dependent on uh, the size of your QuickBooks database and how many transactions you actually have so when that's finished you'll have all of your data in in act and um, you can then if you choose to continue to run manual syncs or most people set up our nightly sync program and we have instructions on how to do that and that'll bring in data automatically every night so when this is finished, your, your base install is pretty much done. And um, if you have additional licenses, you just need to install Q sales data on the other workstations and switch to this QB layout. And uh, when you do so, then when you load Q sales data and the other machines, they will have these additional tabs and the toolbar there and you're set to go. If you get stuck on anything in the install, go to our website, qsalesdata.com. We've got a support email and a phone number there. 
and thank you for your time.